location in Florida. And this year, Ocala Magazine was named Best Consumer Magazine in the state. Now you can join me every Friday at 10 a.m. on Ocala Magazine Radio, where we bring the pages of Ocala Magazine to life. Right here on The Source, Ocala Magazine thanks you for making us number one. And remember, there is only one Ocala Magazine. All right, 20 minutes after 11 o'clock. It's not a bad-looking Monday, and it is Monday. And if you got up this morning and you said to yourself, oh, man, I got to get to work, how come I can't be rich like that other guy in that nice-looking car up ahead of me? Well, you can be rich. Rich is not always a, 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 just a lucky stroke. Rich is quite often, when people have money, quite often, they if you could sit down with them long enough, you could probably learn how to do what they do. Or, or maybe buy a book by one of them who wrote a book about it. Exactly. I don't know, I'm not making that up. There's a lot of people, we probably all know people who have money, who um, did not always have money, who earned it. Um, they were not, you know, born into royalty or that kind of thing. And and if you listen to their stories, they pro- they probably could lose it all and become wealthy again in their lifetimes. That, yes. That's what I think. I don't know if it's always true. Uh, but there is a science behind a lot of it. Paul Morris is going to help us out with this topic. He's got a book called Wealth Can't Wait. Um, Paul is one of the top-selling broker-slash-owners at Keller Williams Realty. He's an award-winning entrepreneur, a trainer, a business consultant, Um, And the subtitle of Wealth Can't Wait is Avoid the Seven Wealth Traps, Implement the Seven Business Pillars, and Complete a Life Audit Today. Uh, Paul Morris, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm okay. Where are you calling from? Santa Monica. I love Santa Monica. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yeah, and, and you all are in a very beautiful part of the world as well. I get to get a chance to go down and visit Florida quite a bit too. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, you know, Santa Monica is not a cheap real estate area, so you must be uh, the proof is in your pudding, huh? You're living in a nice place. I am living in a nice place, and uh, the, the the prices keep going up. And one of the things that I do is always, um, I always buy using certain real estate fundamentals. So, so very often, uh, folks will ask me, well, is now the right time to buy? And I never look at timing the market. The reason why I don't is because I know that, that no one can really time the market. So if you, if you have certain fundamentals and, and, and follow them, uh, you can you can really buy at any time. And I'm 62 years old. In my lifetime, let's say my adult lifetime, I don't think mm-hmm. I've ever heard anybody say that it was a bad time except for maybe the 2008 period, like a little period, maybe two or three year period mm-hmm. around then. Am I, am I mm-hmm. right about that? Mm-hmm. Well, you're absolutely right that people would have said that. And the of course, the, the, the huge... The huge paradox in that is that was precisely the best time to buy. Um, and, and people, it, it's sort of an, an adage in investing that, you know, when you hear, uh, when you hear everybody on the street talking about it, that's when you should get nervous. And there's a lot of famous quotes, you know, buy, uh, uh, sell when they're dancing in the street and, uh, and buy when there's blood in the street. Uh huh. And, and that, yep. How do you know what? That again is, how do you know when it's bloody enough? That's always the question. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, no, see, that's a that's a great that's a great question, and and my answer to that is you never really know when it's bloody enough. And what really in that question, what you're asking is, when is it really the bottom? And that's what we don't know. We don't know when is really the bottom, and we don't know when is really the top. I can certainly say that right now we are much closer to the top of a market than to the bottom of the market. And that being said, I just bought an investment property two months ago. So I'm still buying. I might be a little bit more careful, but I also, I also buy using the same fundamentals. What, what, what is um, your definition of an investment property? Is it, is it something that's going to be used as a, a rental, uh, a typical tenant kind of re, uh, relationship, or is it mm-hmm. for, for business mm-hmm. purposes? Or, mm-hmm. I mean, again, that's a, that's, a, again, that's a great question because uh, one of the things, and people always ask me how to get started, and the first thing I ask them is, do you own your own home? Um, and if you don't own your own home, then the best place to start with 
a real estate investment would really to be buy your own home. And I, and I again, would apply those principles and I'll share, share with you what those are. But I will tell you, and, and thanks for saying that, um, you know, I believe that anybody can be, build wealth, but not everybody will. So when I, when I was first out of school and really in my first job, I couldn't afford, I was living in Washington, D.C. at the time, which is also an expensive place, and I couldn't afford, I first started in an apartment, and I couldn't afford uh, to buy a house on my own. But one of the things about buying, buying your own primary residence is there are special lending programs that you cannot get for an investment property. Now, I would look at your own home as an investment as well. So you, get, you, take, you take advantage of those, those special um, lower money down, better interest rates for your primary residence. And what I did when I couldn't really afford that was I saved up the smaller amount of money required to buy my own home. And then I just moved in and I filled it with roommates. And so the roommates actually got to the point where the roommates actually paid the whole mortgage. So I was living for free. But even if I weren't, you would take the amount of money that you're putting toward rent and then use a roommate uh, to live with you to pay the rest of it and then you've got your mortgage covered. And you have to have huge discipline for something like this because even though you might have a uh, job and you know you can say oh that's okay I can make it up uh, next week you you have to make sure that you keep putting something away every week so you don't have to play mm-hmm. catch up. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's exactly right, and and you know people think, and if you look at my journey, I I have people sort of um, with me now who who would say like, wow, Paul, you're so disciplined, and you know any of my older friends would just would just laugh at them uh, because I don't view myself as somebody that's that's majorly disciplined, um, but one of the things again in buying your own home or buying buying property is it becomes a a forced savings account so it when you pay your rent that money's gone um and when you put that money into the mortgage you're now you're now own the asset which goes up in value over time as real estate does and you're also paying down the mortgage so you have so it's really a forced savings account um tell me about some of the the wealth traps the book um the book is uh, let's see avoid the seven wealth traps that's the subtitle what are some of the traps sure so so one of them is just avoiding risk so um i i think that 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 more people spend time on the sidelines uh worrying about is now the right time to buy or maybe not even that you know i don't know much about real estate so uh so i'm nervous so they're they're spending more time avoiding risk than they are actually getting into the game and the one thing that i've learned over time is that get in the game and the mistakes you make along the way give you the greatest education that you'll ever have about investing now i'm not saying invest you know just throw the money at it uh, and as I said, I'll share with you quickly the, the uh, three fundamentals that I use to invest in real estate. Okay. And we've had uptown, uh, upturns and downturns, and I've never lost money in a single investment over, over 25 years. And that may sound stunning to some people, but as soon as I tell you the three fundamentals, uh, people will go, okay, right, if you follow those, I can see how that would happen. So number one, I buy value. And what that means is, buying the way it's like it's a, it's an old adage you're buying the worst house in the best neighborhood so if you buy something and let's say you're, you you know the amount that you have to spend is fixed let's say you have two hundred thousand dollars you know two hundred two hundred fifty thousand dollars is your is your um purchase price possibility well there's a few things you could do with that you could buy one that's totally done up the nicest house you could possibly get for that amount amount of money or Instead, you buy the sort of ramshackle one in the much better neighborhood. That's buying value because there's actually a market baked inside of that property, meaning that there is upside waiting to be harvested. If you've got a house that's totally done, 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 market goes up, market goes down, your house is going to go up, it's going to go down along with it. So that's number one. Number two is I always buy where I know. 
And so I know a lot of real estate investors far more sophisticated than me. They're like, oh, well, you know, the time, the, the place to buy now is, uh, is Detroit. Well, I don't know anything about Detroit. So I've only really lived primarily in two places, and one is in Pittsburgh, and, and uh, the other is in Los Angeles. So I have 700 apartment units, 150,000 wow. square feet of commercial retail. Wow. It's all in... Yeah, it's all in L.A. and Pittsburgh. That's awesome. Um, and then, uh, th- I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but thank you so much. What great sure. information. I want to make sure the listeners can get the book, and we're so close to out of time. Yes. Wealth Can't Wait is uh, the yes. name of it. Is that the website also, wealthcantwait.com? Yes, that's correct. And you can also reach me at, at Morris X. Dot com. Okay, morrisx.com. Paul Morris, Wealth Can't Wait. Uh, I did find the book on Amazon also. Uh, Paul, thank you for being on the air with us today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate You're it. You're welcome. We'll be right back. Phone with Joe in about 10 minutes. This is The Source, WOCA Ocala. Dozens calling out the Justice Department for pushing a watered-down version of his first travel ban. He also tweeted the Justice Department should ask for an expedited hearing before the Supreme Court and seek a much tougher version. In another tweet, he wrote, We are extreme vetting people coming into the U.S. in order to help keep our country safe. Fox's John Decker. The International Space Station has welcomed its first returning vehicle in Six years, a SpaceX Dragon repeating a visit, bringing supplies. Fox News, we report, you decide. If you're familiar with cloud computing, you probably know that Amazon Web Services offers a complete set of secure compute storage application and deployment services that help companies launch and scale their IT infrastructures while lowering costs. But did you know that you're still responsible for protecting your own AWS-based assets, meaning your applications and data, from advanced cyber threats? Protect your AWS with Barracuda Network's Advanced Firewall Solutions. Visit AWS Marketplace or barracuda.com slash AWS to learn more. There are two things every parent wants when their child goes to college. For their child to do well and a way to afford it. Now, with Discover Student Loans, parents can have the best of both worlds. Not only do our loans cover up to 100% of school certified costs with zero fees, but we'll give them a cash reward for each new student loan if they earn at least a 3.0 GPA or equivalent. That means every A in history or B in math could help them earn a cash reward for good grades. Just one of the many ways we treat you like you'd treat you. Apply now in 15 minutes or less at discoverstudentloans.com. Limitations to apply. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. People who take the fewest vacations, we know they're nearly eight times more likely to have a heart attack or die of heart disease. Hey, this just in, Intelligence for Your Life fans, the secret to great hair is nuts. Pepper also removes soap residue from clothing, which causes colors to fade. How crazy is this? The recommended amount is a teaspoon of ground pepper combined with your detergent in every load. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Keep up with what's going on in the downtown area with Ocala Downtown Newspaper. Delivering thousands of newspapers to businesses in the downtown area, Ocala Downtown is there to keep you informed. They even have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about it. It's simple. For more info, just call Tom's Picks, 352-804-1223, and pick up your copy of the downtown Ocala newspaper today. Now read Ocala downtown newspaper online. Here are today's headlines from the source, WOCA. The governor and leaders of the Florida legislature have settled their differences over the budget. Rank-and-file lawmakers will return to the state capitol on Wednesday for a special session, and they'll have three days to decide if they want to go along with the deal. Rick Scott says the deal will put more money into education, tourism, marketing, and job creation. A Marion County man is accused of crushing up Oxycontin pills, snorting them on the customer service counter inside a public supermarket, and then attempting to drive away from the store in a vehicle that was not his. Three Marion County Sheriff's Office deputies responded to the store at 8075 Southwest State Road 200 in reference to the suspicious incident. The report states that 48-year-old Christopher Catlin crushed up the pills and then snorted them. He left his pill bottle with no label, which contained 42 clonazepam pills and 32 oxy cotton pills on the desk. Catlin was charged with two counts of possession of a controlled substance without a prescription. He was booked into the Marion County Jail. 
The 2017 Atlantic hurricane season is underway, and that brings a timely caution from Florida's Attorney General Pam Bondi, who is asking Floridians to be prepared should a storm impact the state. Bondi is encouraging citizens to review the 2017 Hurricane Preparedness Guide to prepare for a storm, but there's more to hurricane seasons than storms, she cautions. There are some common scams that can arise before a storm moves in and after it clears out. The guide includes information about how to avoid scams before and after a storm, suggestions for a full supply list, and other important preparation tips. Some of the most common storm-related scams to watch out for include tree removal scams, building repair scams, debris removal scams, disaster relief scams, and water testing and treatment scams. The guide includes tips on being on the lookout for price gouging, exercising caution when it comes to products that claim to be hurricane-proof or impact-proof, being wary of any contractor who approaches unsolicited or offers to perform repairs at a discount with leftover supplies from another job and keeping in mind that numerous charities crop up after natural disasters some of these charities are legitimate while others are run by scam artists looking to profit off of the goodwill of others in 2016 the florida attorney general's office says it received more than 3,100 price gouging complaints from citizens after a state of emergency was declared for hurricane matthew floridians who suspect a scam or would like to report an incident of price gouging gouging should call 1-866-9-NO-SCAM or file a complaint online at myfloridalegal.com. SpaceX has made history, launching a Falcon 9 rocket carrying for the first time a reused Dragon spacecraft. Liftoff of the mission to resupply the International Space Station was called off Thursday because of lightning near the Kennedy Space Center. There were no weather concerns as the rocket blasted off at the backup launch time of 5.07 p.m. Eastern Time this past Saturday. SpaceX is reusing a Dragon capsule that was first launched in 2014. The company has reused first-stage rocket boosters before, but has never reused the spacecraft that went into orbit. The Dragon is scheduled to rendezvous with the space station today, delivering nearly 6,000 pounds of food and other items, including rodents and fruit flies, to be used in experiments. The Falcon 9's first stage landed successfully back at Cape Canaveral eight minutes after Saturday's launch. Once again, there was no jackpot winner in Saturday night's Powerball drawing, but there were a few millionaires made. Two people won over a million dollars in Florida. The jackpot has rolled over 17 times since April when someone in Arizona hit the $60 million jackpot. The jackpot is now estimated at $375 million for the June 7th drawing. And those are the headlines from the source, WOCA 96.3 FM and 1370 AM. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. For Monday, looking humid with variable clouds, a couple showers and thunderstorms arriving in the afternoon for the inland areas, a high of 83 to 86. Then Monday night, mostly cloudy and humid with a shower or thunderstorm around, low 70 to 75. Tuesday, variable clouds, breezy and humid with a couple showers and heavier thunderstorms, high 82 to 86. And Wednesday, mostly cloudy, breezy and humid with a shower or thunderstorm in spots in the morning, a couple thunderstorms in the afternoon, high 83 to 86. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Evan Duffy. I'm Jan Marino from Palm Garden of Ocala, and I'd like to tell you about the Palm Garden Way. We promote individual care, of course, but we also encourage gems. That's going the extra mile, and these are thoughtful individual gifts that make each guest stay special. A gem could be a daily latte or a new book or something else that means a lot to our guest. To find out more about the Palm Garden Way, take a tour located on the corner of 27th Avenue and 34th Street in Ocala. Animus Foundation is the name of the Ocala-based nonprofit sanctuary dedicated to the rescue and rehabilitation of wild and domestic animals. Animus, plainly stated, needs your 100% tax-deductible donation, which will go directly to animal care. This sanctuary is run solely on donations. There are so many questions to answer. Please call 843-6379, and they will explain to you how these creatures that live among us are cared for. Please call 843-6379. Thank you. It's time for Farm and Ranch Headlines on the Southeast Agnet. I'm Tyron Spearman reporting. Chris Balkum, the Auburn University Agri Programs Associate, is reporting on peanuts, says that the crop is up and off to a good start. Scout around, he said, for those early season weed escapes and clean those up while the weeds are small and easy to control. Another recommendation, he said, is to begin your fungicide program. Disease control in peanuts is one of the most expensive input costs, he said. Most everyone wants to make the highest yield and save money by reducing the number of sprays. He said, my advice is to start spraying peanuts for leaf spot 
when the crop is 35 to 40 days old. You don't want to get behind and spend more money trying to play catch-up while still suffering yield losses at the end. Get the fungicides on the plants, he said, before disease gets established and with the recommendation rate and volume of spray for good canopy coverage. There are many times that you are able to delay spraying later in the season that will wind up saving you a trip across the field. When white mold is coming, you can feel it, like a bad omen. Anyone who grows peanuts knows white mold can take a farm by storm. And there's only so much you can do about it. Actually, no. Excuse me? Well, you see, now there's a latest. The fungicide with two powerful active ingredients that control white mold. I'm not buying you. If you want higher yields, you will. Because along with white mold, Aletus controls several other diseases, which means healthier plants and higher yield potential. You don't say. I do. In fact, trials have shown it can produce up to 800 more pounds of peanuts per acre than competitors. <laughs> you talk like you're full of tall tales. More like scientific research. With such long-lasting control, Aletus really can bring yields that reach for the sky. So when white mold is coming... We'll be fully prepared. Visit SyngentaUS.com slash Aletus to learn more. Always read and follow label instructions. I'm Tyron Spearman for Southeast Agnet. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala!